And welcome to the fat middle-aged man with them asses thought provoking blood. Now, get stuck in, for you? Hi there, it's the fat middle-aged man with MS here. Uh, I want to address particularly those that have been newly diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or suspected multiple sclerosis. But actually, it probably applies to just about everybody. Um, we have had a lot of information in the past by... the medical profession is saying that uh, the one of the likely or possible causes of multiple sclerosis is um, bacterial or viral, initial bacterial or viral infection. And uh, I was diagnosed when I was 27 and uh, I was, uh, like most people, studying what I can do to um, help myself uh, deal with the multiple sclerosis either physically um, or uh, and mentally particularly as I discussed in my first video uh, which uh, I, I, I guess rambled a little bit too much but I want to try and get to the point here firstly when I had multiple when I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis I had very, very, very bad heads and I went to the doctor and then my specialist and they would say, well, look, you know, it's it's not something that we're aware of that multiple sclerosis will cause. Um, but the heads were so severe that sometimes, I, in fact, soon after I was diagnosed, I was um, I, I'm a financial I was a financial advisor at the time, and I'd be having I was going to people's houses, and I was having to lie down on their couch to ease the pressure in my head, and when I would sneeze, it's like my head wanted to explode, it's like the blood vessels in my head were wanted to uh, uh, burst out of my skull, and it was so so painful, and often I would. Um, uh, be asleep and I'd, I'd have a bad head so I'd have to sit up and and also many many other things happened I, I would uh, be driving in the car and uh, I'd have this certain um, feeling in my head that I was gonna, almost going to pass out so I used to have to stop the car get out and and sort of move around a bit almost like getting the blood flow but I had no idea what it was it was just something that I'm I'd got used to for probably at least 15 years um, I mean, I've had MS now for 31 years, so it was for at least 15 years I had a, these experiences. A couple of occasions, um, I was a, a passenger in a car, and I got out of the car and I just passed out. Totally bizarre, and uh, I was uh, screened for epilepsy and, all, uh, and anything like that, and it, it was uh, they came back negative, which obviously was it was great, but. The reason why I think it's so important, if you haven't already had uh, blood tests for specific types of uh, infection, after my research um, about four years ago, three or four years ago, you'll have to forgive me if, uh, if my time is slightly out, but maybe uh, between three and four years ago, I was researching. I didn't understand um, why I was the only member of my family that had multiple sclerosis. There was nothing in my uh, grandparents or aunties and uncles or anything like that. My brothers. Um, and um, so I asked my mother, uh, what um, illnesses did I have as a child? And um, I had the usual, except I had scarlet fever as well, but then that wasn't relative, um, that wasn't relevant. But what I started doing was actually trying to look at what could, what other infections would cause very, very bad heads. And um, after a lot of research, I got down to about four or five potential, uh, potential um, 
uh, infections. And uh, to cut a long story short, I, I actually went and had some private blood tests. And what amazed me was that the blood test said that at some point I'd had meningitis and tick-borne encephalitis. And if you look up these conditions, the actual um, uh, the the, uh, the effects effect uh, is well meningitis as as we know especially for children is it can be a killer, but the, the terrible headaches and the and the um, the blood pounding uh, when I was actually sneezing or coughing. You know, the, the, it's like the, the, it's like my head wanted to explode, and I'd I'd, I'd written quite a number of letters to my specialist saying look I'm still getting these these symptoms and it and uh, basically uh, actually although it only took the edge off sometimes I w I'd, I'd been taking um, cocodamol for well 20, 20 at least 25 years and uh, I was getting 200 200 at a time from the doctors but anyway so I have had some time in my life meningitis and tick-borne encephalitis. Now, what those the, the symptoms of those, you 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 can't you can't you can't have meningitis or encephalitis without knowing about it. And the only time I've experienced those particular symptoms was at the same time as when I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Now the frustrating thing is, so basically before I had MS or was diagnosed with MS, I'd never experienced any of those symptoms. So um, when I had my uh, diagnosis, it ended up be, becoming a, at the time, a clinical diagnosis because I had the MRI scan uh, and it, it showed um, maybe two lesions and they said that's not sufficient to say it's multiple sclerosis. I had the lumbar puncture, um, which actually at the time I thought that was what had caused my headaches because you can get a headache after a lumbar puncture, but this went was so severe it went on for years and the, um, the CSF fluid was clear. So it was only over time that it was a clinical diagnosis. Uh, but I'm absolutely certain now that at the time I'd picked up, um, for however I don't know, meningitis and uh, tick-borne encephalitis. And that was the start, in my opinion, of what then grew into uh, multiple sclerosis. And if you look at the literature on meningitis and encephalitis related to multiple sclerosis, they very often are precursors. So I, what I basically want to say is anybody, if you have not had these blood tests, it's like people who um, have been diagnosed with um, multiple sclerosis and they've, and they've had Lyme disease. I checked for that as well, by the way, and that did actually come back negative. So I think there is something to be said for uh, these uh, conditions. Uh, multiple sclerosis, for instance, uh, actually being kicked off by some sort of bacterial or viral infection. And so I would urge anybody who's actually uh, being newly diagnosed or being diagnosed for not, not very long, particularly because if you have had or have meningitis or, 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 meningitis or tick-borne encephalitis, then um, that is likely to be a precursor for multiple sclerosis. I'm not sure whether if if those uh, conditions were treated in time, it would have made any difference, but all I know is that I had that. Interestingly, um, now, so um, I've, I've finished that subject. Interestingly, um, I've only had um, three scans in three um, MRI scans um, throughout my 31 years of MS. Two of them were in the early years where they were both pretty much the same, which was like a couple of 
lesions uh, in my head, full stop. Um, I thought uh, uh, two years ago, um, in fact, no, it was probably three years ago because it was after I'd, I had um, looked into this uh, potential problem with um, uh, what what I, what I could find out of, of my cause of my MS. I, d I asked uh, my uh, specialist if I could have an MRI scan. So, you know, this is like th what, 28 years after the previous one or something. And um, it was very interesting because from having two lesions, <laughs> the report came back with not even counting them, it just had multiple lesions in your head, multiple lesions in your spine. Uh, but interestingly, um, there's been no activity recently. And m m most interestingly was that my brain hadn't atrophied. Now, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Um, I'm assuming that my brain is of normal size and it hasn't shrunk or that uh, it couldn't get much smaller. So um, I, I guess I should be grateful for that. The possibility that my brain hasn't atrophied is, is that I have um, spent most of my time uh, since I've had MS uh, uh, either educating myself uh, with regard to MS or uh, uh, um, self-development or that sort of thing. I'm very interested in British politics. I'm very interested in um, a, a number of things. So I, 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 I and, and also retraining myself because as a financial advisor, um, and I'm not doing that now, although I still like to uh, sort of uh, mentor young entrepreneurs, um, I have had to retrain myself if I want to be of any use. So I've actually been educating myself, training myself um, on uh, all manner of things uh, related to computers, etc. Things that I can do when I'm able to do th do it. So if I'm if I'm well enough, I can get on the computer and I can actually do something. Uh, if I'm not, then I just rest and I don't feel too bad about it. The next video I'm going to talk about is the uh, two very misleading words of motivation and um, uh, motivation and motivation and discipline. That's going to be the subject, the next subject. Till till next time. Bye now.